Well, a little excited here today, guys. It's Christmas in October. I got my three bucks back from last year, plus this one buck that I call Heavy Horns back from 2011, I think that deer was. So we're gonna hang these up. Pretty fired up to get them back. That brings me up uh, another thing I just thought of too is during the off season I want to show some of these bucks some footage to them. I know I've had several people ask to see some of that and um, I had all my old footage was on mini DV and I had that sent back and put on a thumb drive so we've got that now where we can access it a lot better. So during the off season we'll do a few hunts with some of the deer in here that'll be fun too. This one's got a home right here. Try not to drop this on my head. This is probably my most massive buck. This base right here goes seven and three eighths and this one's a little over six. I was telling Joe, I said, yeah, it'd be nice to have three or four more like that to go after. All right, now, next on the list, picket fence. I think I'm gonna put him down right here where Rachel's split G2 buck is. You guys remember that one from 2019 she shot during shotgun. I think I'm gonna take that one down and put picket fence right there. Now these other ones, they're gonna go clear up. But I'm gonna wait and get the little monkey to do that. He's a little monkey. <laughs> well, there's all these sheds for picket fence. Think that screw's strong enough to hold those? Find out. About to find out. There's one set. 17 more to go. I kind of got to laughing at picket fence. So that's some crazy drop times he's got going. I'm undecided if I like the sheds hanging off it or not. That's the way I've got the rest of them, but the rest of them don't have that many sheds with him, so. I'll see if I leave those. I'll let them soak in a day or two. I really like that one on the end that we just put up last. He looks really nice. These will end up going up, clear up, but I'll wait and do that probably tonight. Which one's your favorite? I kind of like that framey 11 down there. He looks beautiful. They all look really nice, but if you had to pick a favorite, which one is it? What is it, the ninth or 10th today? Sunday. Whatever it is, I think it might be the 10th, but got this cool front moving in, so we're going to be hunting on the ground this evening. So I'm going to do my shooting from the ground here. Let's start out with this mule deer right here on the side, see what he is. No pressure, guys. Nobody's watching. Just me and Joe out here. I think we're in for a 10, right side maybe. Let's give the Yodi a try. I'm gonna call that to be only 17, let's see. Oh, 20. Bottom 10, I think. Seems how this is Sunday, we're gonna go Hail Mary Sunday. We'll shoot at that mule deer way out there. But it's important to note, this is just for practice. I'm not gonna shoot at a deer that far, so don't send me any hate mail. Well, you can if you want, but I... Whoa, just a bit outside. I gotta shoot that one again. That's a worst shot all season right there. That's a little better. Might have fallen out of my peep a little bit too. That's one of the challenges of really shooting well. So I'm shooting a 3 16 peep. And if you just come out of the center of that, having it centered on your housing, that'll be a miss right there if you do everything else perfect. Yeah, let's go see what we did. Beauty 10. 
this muley's been getting smashed. That's the worst shot I've made on him right there, and it's still a solid 10. Even that second one was out. I thought maybe that was good. It's pretty close to where I was aiming at that one. It's still out of the 10, but this one's way out. Just goes to show you. I'm human just like the rest of you guys. 58 yards. I'd like to put them in there better than that, but it's all right. We'll just keep firing away. Give myself room for improvement. All right, I think we're gonna go after that Wolverine buck, so let's go get ready and give it a try. Man, it's just a little too quiet tonight. Virtually no wind. It's maybe five, six mile an hour, but I feel like everything for a half mile can hear you. I can hear you thinking right now. front is just coming in it's still still in like the mid to upper 70s right now it may get rained on getting out of here is supposed to start about seven so see how that works out Here we are, October 10th. We're back in here after that Wolverine bug. This is the first hunt for him. This draw you can see right here. We'll do a cutaway so you can see that. You can see the trees right there. That's where I've jumped him out a couple times bedded right there. So if he's bedded there, we'd be in pretty good shape. But to the south of this is a really good looking alfalfa field and then standing beans beyond that. So I feel like he might be moving to feed that way at night so hopefully he'd transition into here and stage up in this little plot that clover that we set up for him is just at the bottom of this hill if you go north drop down over this hill that clover and that redneck are right there but i just i don't know from the other cameras i haven't been seeing him so i feel like he's probably heading south where i don't have the cameras so that's why we're going to try this spot We'll see what happens. Hopefully we have a better hunt than the last one. But these cold fronts, or in this case, kind of a cool front, I like the next day after those cold fronts come in the next day and then the day after that. So the, the two days after the cold fronts, my favorite with the next day being the best normally. But I like to kind of rate those cold fronts, scale of one to 10. Some of the early ones we had this year, you know, just a few degree drop, maybe four or five degrees, and the wind would switch out of the northwest. Sometimes that's enough to get them up on their feet, but like on one like we've got coming in tonight and tomorrow, that's a little better. I'd rate that at about a five. You know, it's all about that temperature differential. If you go from 80 degrees, which is what it's been in the 80s, for a high of like 50, I mean, that's like almost as good as you can get. Now, so this cold front's not quite that good, but it's supposed to be in like the mid-60s tomorrow. So it's going from high 70s to mid-60s with that wind switching to northwest. So with it being, you know, pretty solid, I'm going to go to my better spots, like where I think I can encounter these bucks, like a spot like this for Wolverine. Or if I'm after that, that wide eight, you know, I'd go to his core area where I think I'd see him versus early in the year you know if I don't have a cold front I probably just wouldn't even go to my best spots I'll still hunt the food I mean, it's all about food this time of year even where they're bedded is almost always in relation to where they're feeding so but I mean there's good cover all around us so he could be closer well let's sit in here for a couple hours and see what happens
Joe said we have a deer sighting. I still don't believe him. I was like, no way. You're kidding. He said, no, that's true. He sees fur and everything. Well, those two deer just worked off. That little buck kind of chased her out of the field there, but I had one of the viewers send me a message on Facebook, wanted some ideas about some public land stuff. And most of you probably know I'm from Southwest Michigan. I used to hunt a lot of public land there. What I did a lot back then was I would research topo maps and look for train features, find a good funnel that way. The other thing I looked for a lot was water features. Every once in a while I'd find like two ponds that were close together, a little finger of water or something would go up and draw, and they'd have to come around the end of it, so that's something to keep in mind. Thanks for reaching out, Shane. I believe it was. Appreciate the comment. After a slow start that ended up being an excellent hunt there that last 45 minutes they were really filing out of the woodwork I don't know what we ended up seeing probably 10 to 15 deer but right there just about dark that wind switched out of the southeast it was supposed to be northwest all night is what they were forecasting and something with this front I suppose it was straight out of the southeast which is opposite what we wanted so it kind of spoiled that spot for Tomorrow, I wanted to go back there and hunt that again tomorrow because the conditions are going to be so good after this cold front, but I think I'll rest it for now. We'll, we'll go hunt a different buck tomorrow. So, ended up being a great hunt though. I appreciate you guys watching again. We'll see you tomorrow.